So Reverend Jones and I were discussing that we should tell a joke when we came on stage and we said we would wing it and we both decided we wouldn't tell a joke. Right. Um, I have the pleasure of going first um, with this Pearl story. I don't know how many people are familiar with it, but I'll give you a very brief synopsis. In 1848, uh, three great families got together. The Edmondsons, the Jennings, and the Bell working with Asbury Methodist Church to find a way to get their children out of bondage into freedom. The catalyst behind their immediate action and rash movements to some extent was because the Western territories were expanding slavery and their daughters were at jeopardy. Um, these slave owners were actually looking for specific skilled workers and DC had some of the best political crops of these skilled workers. Um, they could build, they could, they could sew, they could uh, do administration, you name it, they could do it. And they wanted breeders. And uh, if you're a father, imagine your daughter being in jeopardy, not only being sold to a state where you possibly would not see her, but being used for the pleasures of a, a plantation owner. So that enraged not only the men that had children, but also enraged the church. And the churches of both black and white got together to raise money to free um, these girls along with these three other families that were in very similar situations. What ended up happening is 77 people got together with the help of Frederick Douglass and Sumner and that whole entourage of abolitionists, both black and white, of different faiths, and they chartered a boat called the Pearl. And they started at the Southwest Waterfront here in Washington, D.C. And they went all the way to the point lookout where they were captured. The reason why they were captured is because it was a storm in the Chesapeake and they had to dock because it was a coastal storm. They really couldn't deal with 20 foot swells. And they were escorted back to DC. The catalyst of what happened and was, was let's get free. But what happened as a result of their capture, um, it, 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 we wouldn't be here today having this conversation had it not. Um, you had this same group of people that were on that boat from 1848 upward who worked with Sumner to get Abraham Lincoln in office. The Edmondson girls would sing on soapboxes in front of churches to pull people in in New York and Pennsylvania to raise money, and that's how he actually got on presidential ballot. That same group also worked in the Civil War and helped fight the war and win the war. That same group also worked with Abraham Lincoln <coughs> General Howard, Howard University, to form the Freedmen's Bureau. And they work with Frederick Douglass in the Bureau of Deeds. And, and I'm going to check that fact. When you come out to the table, we'll check that fact. But it's, I think it's the Bureau of Deeds to form, which we now call Bury Farms, which is actually a Freedmen's Colony. So there's some very interesting history in D.C. Most of the families that are here are unfamiliar, that have been here for, for generations, are even unfamiliar with their role and with their family's role were in that um, But the state itself is probably one of the most significant events ever in American history related to the abolition of slavery. And then I'll leave you with this last fact. Um, of the 9,800 or so people who were emancipated during the Emancipation Proclamation, roughly about 3,000 of them were of African descent. The, the, the vast majority of those emancipated were European and Asiatic descendants. So often we speak of slavery as a color. And I am here to say to you today that it is absolutely not a color. It is actually a state of mind. And these people knew that in 1848. And sadly, I see our society slowly starting to forget that freedom for all men is something that's given to us by our Creator. And I'll leave that for representatives. Were unable to bring any heavy equipment in uh, to actually allow the people would come and say, well, we could take a, uh, you know, this type of equipment and we could just knock down those bushes and uh, move all of those things out of the way. But actually, it was a modern day after slavery, actually. And I say that jokingly, but it, but it really was. Um, because we only thing that we could use uh, to clear actually were um, industrial type of weed, uh, weed whackers and uh, hedge cutters, and uh, picks and shovel and rakes. Uh, that's how we would actually had to do it. And we are thankful uh, that uh, you know, just in September, we've been able to clear uh, at least uh, uh, three quarters of those, of those grounds to begin 
the uh, actual restoration process. Uh, it, it is no small matter uh, to do that uh, because that's just the first part of clearing uh, and cleaning the land. After that, uh, then we have to work on uh, securing, securing the property, uh, which is going to take fencing all the way around. And then after that, the next phase will be that of uh, then uh, beginning to take the uh, tombstones and uh, place them back in their proper sections and plots uh, throughout the cemetery. Uh, there is a total, I might have said, 30, 36,000 um, uh, plots uh, actually there at the Woodlock Cemetery that does have also a uh, mass grave with about 100, 150 to 200 Italians uh, that are actually buried there that were considered covered uh, during that time period. And also, we also have some Chinese also buried there at the uh, Woodlock Cemetery. And so, uh, with that, uh, I just want to just stop there because uh, uh, we will be inviting you to come to our, our tables that are sit out uh, in the foyer here. Uh, but uh, the uh, marriage uh, or the partnership and initiative that uh, David is going to speak about uh, between the Pearl and the Woodlawn Cemetery uh, Association is just a natural fit because many persons that were on the Pearl ship and their family members are actually buried at Woodlawn. Thank you. Thank you. I would first like to encourage everyone to stop at our tables and uh, we can talk more when we take about 30 seconds to speak about the initiative. Uh, we, we formed an initiative specifically targeting historic locations, not only in War 7 8, where we're going to start, but around the city that have significant African American um, legacy and contributions to American history. One of my father's favorite lines is the contribution of those that were in this escape was led to all Americans free. Um, the initiative is around the creative economy. You'll hear that a lot if you haven't been hearing it already. Creative economy is simply if we have this this venue here, then you stop and get gas on your way out and and, and you stop and buy a donut and coffee. Just by being here today, you stimulate the economy of this neighborhood. We're going to use that same model as it relates to these historic landmarks when we bring that pearl ship back to the Southwest waterfront to, to create jobs and stimulate the economy in our own communities. And we need your help. We need your investment now. We need your help with um, restoration. And we look forward to speaking with you more. Thank you.